I grew up on the Fairly Odd Parents cartoon. I grew up with the amazing Fairly Odd movies starring Drake Bell. Every day, I listened to the same Drake Bell episode of Speech Bubble to listen in on the behind the scenes details of Fairly Odd Summer and how it came to be. I am, for better or for worse, a Fairly Odd fan. So when I heard that there was a live action show being made, I knew that I had to watch it as soon as possible. The possibilities for what the show could be and can be are endless. So when the first trailer came out, we were all excited, all of us, all the fans, to see what glory awaited behind the eyes of Butch Hartman. And let me tell you, we were far from glory. Fairly Otter is the worst, oddest, strangest thing I've ever seen. I'm only about three episodes in, but already I have so much to say. Originally, I had a Titan Season 1 video planned, but fasten your fucking seatbelts because after viewing this show out of pure curiosity, I got some shit to say here before we can take off our pants and f fuck Batman. Let's dive in. But first, a fake sponsor. There's only one thing I need to keep me alive while watching Fairly Otter, and that is the comfort of knowing that someone is out there watching over me. That someone is Jameson Bazzini. This passage from the Jameson Bazzini Bible is all you need to hear to keep you alive and well. Using the teachings of Mr. Jameson Bazzini, you can do many things like survive watching Fairly Otter, or even having Dark Knight Rises on repeat for the rest of your days. Or doing the good old-fashioned AJ stunt, hell, even dice curse meals. What the fuck? What dice curse meals 3? Oh shit, that's a lot of fucking blood. So don't be sad like Dick Grayson just because your mom told you to watch Fairly Otter with your 8 year old sister who has no taste. Learn the teachings of Jameson Bazzini Christ today. The story. The story is a mixed bag for me right now. I like the inclusion of having Timmy Turner out of the show. I think it really works well. He's a man who has finally accepted that he's gotta grow up and he can't have his fairies with him forever. I like that they did this instead of trying to copycat off the grow up Timmy Turner story cause that's perfect. Our main character is Timmy Turner's cousin Vivian and her new stepbrother Roy, who's a young man who's always fond of sibling, a polar opposite to Vivian who wants to live alone with her dad on a farm away from Dimsdale. This is an idea that could work, but I think the part it lacks is this conflict which is resolved in the first episode. If we stuck with this idea the whole show, or at least the season, we could have shown a progression, a character arc, but because we solved the problem in the first fucking episode of your show, it just becomes a boring old sitcom with the Fairly Odd title in it. Fairly Odd Parents was all about a boy who used magic irresponsibly to avoid growing up, and he had to learn that he can't stay a child forever. We slowly watched Timmy Turner grow as a character, become less and less of a brat. This new series though, is just kind of, eh, whatever. Also, the situations Vivian and Roy get themselves into aren't as amazing and fantastical as Timmy's. I get the whole point of modernizing the Fairly Odd Parents, but Seriously, like, instead of going into a video game to save your friends while Vicky is babysitting, we get Vivian and Roy stopping TikTok dances from going viral. Correct me if I'm wrong, but when you were a kid, did you watch Fairly Odd Parents so you could just deal with the frustration of your day-to-day -day life, or did you watch it as an escape into a fantastical world? Fuck you, your nostalgia goggles blind you. Drake Bell loving cunt. Sure, I may be nostalgic, but come on, that's basic fucking storytelling. Don't tell me that your show about magical fairies is something that you're just going to stick in us in our day-to-day -day lives with. Like, <clears throat> I can't even talk, I'm so frustrated. The first episode was about getting farm animals out of Vivian's room, and the third episode's conflict was... Roy playing God. New sister, let's go! Okay, Chief. Broken characters. From what I understand, we only see Timmy once, and to be honest, while I like that, it is a little off-putting. Not the fact that Timmy is not on the show is off-putting, I love that, but look at this Timmy. I know everyone's pointing Predator fingers at Drake Bell, but will you look at the dude they cast as Timmy Turner? My man looks like an Italian gangster. Cosmo and Wanda have felt sidelined for most of what I've watched so far. They are there to just grant wishes and go off and clean Jorgen's toilets or some shit. These are not the characters I remember. Characters who have never left Timmy's side no matter what, who always want to be with Timmy. They don't want to be with these kids, they want to go clean and be Jorgen's slaves instead of be near these fuckers. The new characters. Not a big fan. 
It's hard to be when instead of giving these new characters original personalities and traits like Timmy fucking Turner, a kid who never wanted to grow up, that was something that you could build upon. These characters just have cliche ass fucking traits that can easily be determined how they'll be solved. The whole show is just dragging onto these sitcom cliches and it also kind of has the emotional maturity of Drake and Josh. The show should honestly be called Roy and Vivian. Haven't seen too much of the new characters, but I hope the love story with the chick who's madly in love with Roy actually goes somewhere instead of just being a throwaway gag, cause... <sighs> fuck, I really feel that right now. I can fucking relate, man. I can fucking relate. And one of the new characters that's probably the most enjoyable to me so far isn't any of the main characters. It's Bernard the Sassy Owl. Final thoughts. Next episode I have to watch is the one with Vicky, so I hope that I can actually see that her character is the same and not looking like a 90s child predator. But we'll see. I have hope for the show. I have hope that Butch Hartman, a man who's never let me down once, even when he made these three movies. These two movies. I hope he doesn't let me down again. I pray to the Jameson Bazzini Bible. Just maybe. Things. Will get better.